Hi everyone, in this video from Count Backwards from 10, we're going to take a quick look at how to calculate intraoperative fluid requirements and how to resuscitate a patient. Let's get started. So all of this stems from the four, two, one rule. And what this is, is a way of evaluating a patient's hourly fluid requirements. So for all of us who are not sure what this is, what it means is that for the first 10 kilograms of a patient's weight, sorry, for the first 10 kilograms, first 10 kilograms, they get four ml per kg. For the second 10 kilograms, they get two ml per kg. And for every kg after the first 20, because we have 10 and 10, it's 1 ml per kg. So this is kilograms 1 to 10, and this is kilograms 11 through 20, and this is kilograms greater than or equal to 21. So for a 70 kilogram patient, they would get 4 ml per kg for the first 10, so they would get 40 ml. Then they would get 2 ml per kg for the next 10, so that's 20 ml, and this is 20 kilograms. And then they get 1 ml per kg for the next 50 kilograms, because they weigh 70. And so our total ml for this patient is 110 ml per hour, and that's their fluid requirements. So the shortcut, and there's always a shortcut, or at least most of the time, is patient's weight in kilograms plus 40, so long as they weigh at least 20 kilos. So for a 70 kilogram man, it's 110 ml, and you can check, do the math out like we did here, uh, and just make sure that it's the same. So now that we know our hourly requirements, we need to figure out what our patient's total fluid deficit is. And this is a function of their time spent NPO. And so if our 70 kilogram patient has surgery scheduled for 8 a.m., so surgery at 8 a.m., and they've been NPO since 10 p.m., that means their total NPO time is 10 hours. And so 10 hours NPO times 110 ml leaves us with a total fluid deficit of 1,100 ml fluid deficit, which is a little bit more than a liter. And this has implications if you're dealing with older patients, say, or diabetics who don't have as robust sympathetic systems and are unable to adequately compensate for the vasodilation that occurs with induction and anesthesia. A liter deficit in volume can cause major swings in hemodynamics, and so it isn't a benign fluid deficit. Now, we're not done because we need to add in a couple of other factors before determining how much and over what amount of time we have to administer this fluid. So we have to take into consideration blood loss, any surgery in which there is a significant blood loss, there should be a 1 ml blood loss to 1 ml crystalloid resuscitation. Historically, physicians were more aggressive and pursued a 3 to 5 milliliter crystalloid to 1 ml blood loss model, but recent studies have demonstrated that a positive fluid balance, especially in open abdomens, led to problems closing, which can lead to longer hospital stays due to swelling, and an increase in morbidity and mortality. So a more conservative approach is now used with 1 cc of crystalloid for each 1 cc of blood loss. Now the other thing we need to look at is insensible losses sensible losses. So as we know, our skin acts as a barrier to the world, preventing things from outside getting in and things from inside getting out. And fluid is one of those things. Insensible losses are fluid lost from evaporation 
from the skin or exposed tissue or during res respiration. The more tissue that's open and exposed or just the more skin exposed during surgery, the more fluid loss. Varying degrees of insensible losses occur based off of the type of surgery being mild, moderate, and severe. And the replacement for each of these is one to three ml per kg, four to six ml per kg, and seven to nine ml per kg. And so the magic numbers here are two, five, and eight ml per kg for insensible losses depending on the type of surgery. A mild type of surgery would be some type of laparoscopic surgery or small hernia repair, whereas a moderate might be an open coli or open appendectomy, and severe ones would be, say, open bowel resections or, or big exploratory laparotomies where there's really a lot of exposure. So I'm going to go ahead and erase this, and we're going to talk about one final example to kind of bring all of this together. So we have our 70 kilogram man or woman uh, who's undergoing open bowel resection, who's been NPO times 10 hours. And we already established that our deficit is 1100 ml. And so we split our deficit into three piles. The three piles are 50%, 25%, 25%. First hour, second hour, and third hour. So we're looking at 550 ml, 225 ml, and 225 ml. Then we have to add our hourly maintenance, which is another 110 to each of them. And since we're doing an X lap, we have 8 ml per kg of insensible losses times 70 kilograms which gives us 560 ml per hour. So we're gonna add another 560 to each one of these, maybe a little bit less than the first one because the patient isn't completely open and hasn't really been exposed for that, that long yet, but we're gonna leave it for the sake of the lesson. And when we add it up, we get 1220 ml, about 1 1.2 liters, 995 ml, 995 ml, and then you have to add blood loss in each hour. And so this kind of gives you an idea of how much fluid a patient should really be getting. And you can see that a 70 kilo person, you know, 140, 150 pounds for an X lap requires literally three liters of fluid without blood loss before the first three hours of the surgery is even done. Now, every hour after the third is just going to be your hourly maintenance plus your insensible losses plus your blood loss. And it still adds up to be quite a, quite a lot of fluid for resuscitation. Now, if you're looking for a shortcut, head to mdcalc.com and search intraoperative fluid dosing in adult patients. I wrote it, and it's a quick and easy way to figure out your hourly needs. So that's all for intraoperative crystalloids and initial resuscitation. I hope this cleared it up. As always, if you have any questions or concerns or are interested in getting involved, please feel free to contact us. Subscribe below, follow us on Instagram for daily content, and stay tuned for the next video.